this Rio Murata photographer based in Tokyo we meet again. A topic that gets neglected and I actually never saw that many people talk about it but like talking about like moving dust from images in Photoshop and in today's video I would like to sort of display my ways of doing it and removing dust from the image and not physically blowing air hot air onto the film negatives because we all know that it's nearly impossible to remove the dust from the film negatives using a blower. So full disclaimer, this is going to be me rambling again, once again displaying my sort of perspective of the process and why it's essential, why it shall never be neglected. For your information and the people who are new to photography, if you receive your film negatives from a lab or uh, some kind of like location where they you know process it for you in most cases they will get some kind of dust or some kind of particles within that image and depending on in my case i scan my like film negatives in-house using uh, epson's gtx 830 which is equivalent to a v550 or a v650 i don't know which one it is but depending on that, you know, scanner, there is that option where the what you call the scanner will automatically detect the particle dust particles and remove it for you. But we all know, or some people, or some people don't know that it doesn't work 100% of the time. And in the end, when we like post process it in Photoshop or any kind of editing software, we will have to manually take those dust particles away from the image to make it look much better. So after you sort of like scan your images or if you get it like scanned from a lab basically it's mostly in a TIFF format or maybe in JPEG format and I basically what I do is I select one to three images in my case I save it into I scan it into a, like a TIFF format and bring those files into Photoshop drag and drop and in my case I basically like like I said, drag one to three photos. If I do more than that, because I shoot mostly medium format, medium format tends to have a bigger file size. So if you jam like 10 TIFF files shot on a medium format into Photoshop, most cases it's gonna crash your Photoshop or in, in good cases, it might slow it down. So in my case, I try to like do one to three images at a time. And when I like open those files in Photoshop, what I do is I basically look at the image at roughly 100%. So you get a glimpse of the whole image. And you basically, if you see something that sticks out such as this area, what I do is I basically enlarge that area specifically, maybe like 200%, 300%, depending on what you scanned it in. And sort of start removing the small dust particles and some hair like particles that you might see on your image. I guess the what I call the ratio, the percentage of the image size will di differ depending on what format you shot. If you shoot with a 35 mil, I think the resolution or the percentage becomes like 80 to 100%. While if it's a medium format file, I think 50% would be more than adequate. Okay, so it's going to be so hard for me to like explain because I do it unconsciously. So basically in Photoshop, there's actually two tools that you're going to be using. One is a spot removal tool and another one is a copy stamp tool. And when we compare them side by side, I personally 80% of the time use the spot repair tool and it's located on the left side in Photoshop. I don't know what it looks like, but it looks like a sort of like a racer with a circle on top. And what it does is basically takes information around that area that you just clicked and sort of like blends into that surrounding area. While the other copy stamp tool, basically you're basically like moving a specific area on top of the area that you designated so you're like cloning one area to another and depending on the scenarios you can use them wisely to attain the perfect like results once you're done sort of like taking part taking the away the sort of like dust particles within that image what you do is you do the opposite instead of like zooming into the image by control drag to the right you press control and drag to the left and you basically zoom out of your image and maybe go back to like 100% or so and see if that area still like pops out the area that you just cleaned if there's like any of those sort of like dust remaining and stuff like that and if you still see some kind of dust or particle 
remaining, you go back and zoom into that specific area and remove that dust or maybe hair-like particles. And then you zoom out and see if you fixed it. And then you move on to a different portion of the image and you just repeat and do it again and again, basically. And keep note that I don't do this like, like on every like pixel that you see because sometimes it might be a grain type of particle and you think it's a, like a dust, but it, it's a grain particle. And you, and what happens is that if you do it too much, you'll, you'll kind of get sort of like a sloppy image or some kind of like washed out image without any grain particles. So don't do it too much or else you might like ruin your photos. So keep that in mind. The next part, actually, the if you after you get used to using the what was it the uh, well, I forgot the name again <laughs> the spot repairment like tool. The next one is the copy stamp tool. And how I sort of like differentiate these two tools is that if you see some sort of like area where you finish using the what was this the repairment brush. Let me just get this back on and sort of like something's not right something's not right so i go like here and there's basically a dust particle on top of the line of this road i could just oh wait something something something's laggy <laughs> i think i messed up somewhere so let me go back to that area so there's this sort of like when i zoom in there's like this on top of this line there's a dust particle i could use a quick selection and, and it doesn't look it looks okay actually but there are times when it i can't do this and that remain and that some kind of artifact remains on this like bottom right right here so what i do is i select the copy stamp tool on the left which is this actually sorry guys it's in japanese but it's called the copy stamp tool which looks like a stamp actually you click on that and what you do is a on a windows actually you press control out alt or wait, control wait a second oh it's not control it's out sorry <laughs> so i just press the out button and basically try to get the an area that's like really close to that area right, area right here and i basically move it on to it side like so and what happens is you're basically moving one part of the sort of like area and you're basically cloning it to on top of it and it looks all right in my opinion and this is sort of like a really useful if you use it on an area where there's a lot of things going on so let's say this fence right here you can basically i mean if you use the tool that i just mentioned the spot like repairment tool and if you just do this it's gonna look weird right here so but if you use like that copy like stamp you can basically align it together and it doesn't look it looks all right so depending on the circumstance you basically can use one for the other whilst in some cases the spot repairment tool does the job while the, you need to use the copy stamp tool to do the job. So depending on the circumstance, um, use it wisely, people. <laughs> In this process over and over again on each image that I shot on my medium format camera. And once you get used to it, you'll understand that because you're actually taking so much time and effort on each of your photos, like compared to like shooting with digital, you, you, actually take more caution and more like you basically look at your image more than shooting with digital and what happens is that you will gradually understand that if this image is worth your time and effort to remove the dust and because we all know that when we shoot with film there will be a shot that looks really crappy and there are going to be those times when you shoot with maybe like a 35 mil with 36 exposures, it's going to be like nearly impossible to remove the whole like dust particles and you know hair like particles from the image because it, it's time consuming to do it on 36 images. You will realize that which image will be 
like worth it, worth that, you know, time and effort. While some image you realize that, oh, I, I should not allocate any time on this image because it looks just crappy and doesn't look that good. You'll know that borderline and by understanding that it'll make you a better photographer in the long run. And at the same time, because you're looking at your image more and more while you're removing the dust, you realize in your like, you start to have this mindset of like, oh, I wish I shot it like from a different angle, then this image would look so much better. And by sort of like understanding the composition, understanding the lighting, where the light's hitting, where the shadow is casting and stuff like that, it will make you a better photographer. And once you go out and shoot again, you have that somewhere within your head and you can basically pull that out and sort of like reshoot it or maybe when that scenario similar scenario comes out in the field you might have to like reuse it and hard to like sum this up and sum this up in the end but i'm not saying like don't remove the dust particles and stuff like that on every single photo that you shot whether or not if it's like digital if it's like medium format any kind of film format 35 110 i don't know if that exists but it's, a, it's something that's essential and something that we should understand greatly. And let's be honest, this is sort of like something I realized, but people around the globe will judge you by your photos. I mean, honestly, like Instagram specifically, people don't know what kind of person you are at all because what Instagram does is it just showcases your photos and that's basically it. And maybe a little bit of a clip of yourself. If you're if you're like a famous person, people will understand you, know you, but the majority of us, people don't know about us. And that's actually, I'm going off topic a little bit, but the main reason I made my YouTube channel is because I wanted people to understand what type of person I am and what I take seriously. And by making these types of videos, people will understand that, oh, I take so much caution and removing dust from my photos and people might start appreciating my work. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm going off a little bit of topic again. But like if you have some kind of account related to social media, like Instagram, like I said, Facebook or website, it's important to like keep that in mind and perfect your work along the way. Imagine like the, going back to the film photography, removing dust. Like if you keep like shooting and if you keep like editing, you will understand that which photos are worth like your time and effort to like remove the dust. And eventually if you know that that photo is going to make it into your social like media or portfolio in the end, or if you're gonna end up like printing, I mean, if, if you're someone who prints a lot, you know what I'm talking because if there's like a dust particle when you print that specific print out of your printer, you just wasted ink, you wasted more money on top of the you know, price that you paid to buy film and the paper and the ink itself. So you know what I'm talking about. So if there's like more risk involved, there's like more reward, but in order to achieve that reward, we have to work harder. So hope that makes sense for you guys. And yeah, by continue to perfect your work consistently and posting them onto social media, any kind of media will do. People will start to notice that you are a dedicated photographer or videographer or any kind of cinematographer and they will understand that you love to shoot and post at the same time. So hopefully this video has helped some people and I'm curious if you guys are interested in these types of like post-process type of videos. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. I'm happy to reply. So have a great day. We will see you next time. Peace like for the subscribers that are watching my videos, like are there like any specific contents that you guys want to see, like specific location that you guys are like interested about? And because like I'm running out of ideas at the moment. <laughs> and at the same time, I mean, I was like curious if you guys are interested in like going to like camera shops in Tokyo, specifically like film camera shops or like camera shops that sell both film cameras and digital and I was thinking of like making a video on where I purchased my GW690. I'm like curious if you guys are interested in that type of video. I need to get an appointment to shoot that area or like where if I were in Tokyo where would I purchase a film camera those types of videos. I'm like kind of curious what you guys are wanting to see and if I could get some kind of opinions from you guys it would like benefit my channel and for my viewers. If you're like thinking of traveling to Tokyo during this time of the season 
pandemic and war at the same time. I don't know if it's possible to travel to Tokyo right now. I mean, the government right now is like, I think they opened up and said that we could actually accommodate up to 5,000 people of tourists in a year, in, in a month or so, if I'm right. So there's that possibility of traveling to Japan, actually, if you can make it to the 5,000 limit per month. So who knows like if you're interested please leave it in the like comment section what you want to see or what you would love to see so yeah cheers